World Food students, it feels kind of weird to be doing this for almost the last time. There's one more country after this slideshow and then we are done with our travels around the globe, our culinary journey. And that has been fun, strange though, this quarter. But I hope fun for you. So, two countries this last week, last week before we kind of put everything together, and one is Korea. And Korea is really two countries these days. So two flags here, South Korea, and under that, North Korea. For most of their history, they were united as one country. And that country has a, a rich historical heritage, kingdoms and empire, grand architecture, as well as religion, Buddhism, Christianity. But it has become, of course, a modern nation um, with this gleaming modern metropolis of Seoul. So, yeah, Korea, here we go. The other country we're going to visit this week is Japan, over here. Here's North and South Korea, it's a peninsula, lots of coastline, right? China, over here. If we had more map down here, you could see um, Thailand, where we've been before. Uh, and of course, India is further to the west. All right. Since we're dealing, we have one language here, Korean, but we're dealing with two capitals, Seoul for South Korea and Pyongyang for North Korea. Um, by far the larger population is in the South, 51 million versus about 26 million in North Korea. North Korea is officially atheist, but likely not everybody there really is atheist. Um, some probably are, though, and in South Korea also, more than half of the population describes themselves as unaffiliated. But there are significant percentages of people who are Christian or Buddhist. All right. Um, geographically, a lot of mountains in here. More plains down uh, in the south and southwest. And that's where a lot of food gets grown and a lot of population is focused. But most of this peninsula is mountainous. And in fact, it gets quite cold in the winter. It freezes regularly. Uh, summer, they have monsoons. That should sound familiar to you from Thailand and India. Uh, Southeast Asia is, is prone to that. All right. Economically, we have two very different stories here. South Korea, um, some people refer to it as the miracle on the Han River. Because coming out of World War II, South Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. Well, Korea as a whole was. Now, South Korea is the 12th largest population in the world. They are one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Um, if you're buying things like electronics or automobiles, there's a decent chance that you might be getting something made in Korea. They do have some problems. Um, they have to expend some resources on military stress between the two parts of the country. And a lot of their businesses are owned by chibols, which are like family-owned conglomerations. And it's not at all clear whether those will have sustainability. So will the economy continue to grow? Harder to say, but it is right now. On the other hand, North Korea, as you probably know, is a communist country. Most things owned by the state there and a lot of communal farming. And um, North Korea has remained, as the whole peninsula was after World War II, one of the poorest places in the world, one of the lowest ranked uh, in terms of average 
income, uh, and they are the lowest ranked in terms of economic freedom in the world. Going further back in history, for a long time, this peninsula was divided into three kingdoms. I don't remember the names of them, and I'm not going to ask you to learn the names of them. Uh, and those three kingdoms fought amongst themselves, and some had, had took turns being in the ascendancy. They also got invaded sometimes, usually by China. So lots of infighting and invasions and stuff. But finally, um, a little over a thousand years ago, they became unified and you had an empire here in Korea. That, and they remained unified until the early 20th century. Japan occupied and controlled um, Korea then, the whole peninsula, until World War II and through World War II. After World War II, there was tension and as to what direction Korea was going to go. And so they ended up with a civil war. The United States was involved in that war, so the Korean War from 1950 to 1953. Um, we pulled out, and then they split into North Korea and South Korea. We've already talked about the differences between those two. So that's kind of a cultural quick trip to Korea. And what we really want to look at, as always, is the food. This is an Asian country, and like everywhere else in Asia, rice is the foundation, the fundamental staple. Uh, and for Koreans, it's mostly short grain rice. They also use vegetables a lot and meat, especially in South Korea. <clears throat> a little bit more unusual, they have a lot of fermented foods. Um, bean paste that's fermented, chili paste that's fermented. They do a lot of that in their cooking. So kimchi, for instance, which is possibly the best known thing from Korea, and it is something that Koreans eat with pretty much every meal. It is um, fermented vegetable, among other things. So other key flavors, sesame oil, soy sauce, garlic, ginger, some of the usual suspects, especially for Asian Flavorings. Uh, let's look at some of the favorite dishes. One that some of you might make is, um, I don't know how to pronounce this, so I, I'm going to say bulgogi. Anyway, it's beef barbecue. Um, so some of you might try that. There is also a stir-fried noodle dish um, that they do in Korea called japchae, pictured up here. And then... Um, they do a mixed rice, bibimbap. Um, so notice the egg on top. You've got rice and different kinds of ingredients kind of mixed together. They do soups too, um, like a ginseng chicken soup. So those are just some highlights, some favorites, things you might decide to try if you ever go to a Korean restaurant. Uh, in the meantime, some of you will be trying to barbecue in the Korean style, and I hope you have fun doing that. Um, tomorrow, you'll learn more about Japan, and we are getting really close to the end of our culinary world tour. It's been great going on this with you. I hope you're having a good week. God bless you.